Hello and welcome to Arsenal's end of season video for 1997. It's been a campaign that's seen many changes both on and off the field, but the Highbury faithful have witnessed a season of excitement and drama that's kept them coming back for more. For the next hundred minutes, we'll bring you every goal, every incident, and all the big interviews with the people that matter. Welcome to Europe, here we come. We've got every goal the Gunners have scored this season, 77 in fact. There's all the news from inside the famous marble halls. Arsenal fan Nick Hornby talks to us about the transformation of his best-selling book, Fever Pitch, into a box office smash. We visit Vic Akers Aces at Highbury as the Arsenal ladies take on Liverpool, looking for their third league title in five years. Arsene Wenger has brought the flair and the smiles back to Highbury. In an end-of-term report, we talked to him about his first year in English football. When you ask Ian Wright a straight question, you get a straight answer. Wenger, Schmeichel, referees. The Gunners star pulls no punches. It's that man again. A personally autographed copy of Ian's new book was on offer in our last competition. Up for grabs this time is the new Arsenal away kit. And finally, in our traditional visit to Coney, the players talk about how their season has gone. And for one man in particular, Buckingham Palace was the venue as Britain's top keeper picked up an unexpected honour. Nobody could have foreseen what was about to happen when the Arsenal players assembled for their pre-season photo call. Just days before the league campaign began, and after only one year in the job, Bruce Rioch was relieved of his duties at the club. The man identified by the Highbury board to fill the vacancy was Frenchman Arsène Wenger, who was managing Grampus 8 in the Japanese J-League. Contractual problems meant he couldn't take charge until the autumn, so Stuart Houston and Pat Rice were put in temporary charge of team affairs. For the players, they just had to get on with the job in hand. All thoughts about the new manager had to be put firmly to the back of their minds as they took the field in their opening league fixture at home against West Ham United. Arsenal streaming forward in the sunshine. Bergkamp, back for Merson. Tim Breaker pressing him against the touchline, but Merson involving Winterburn again. It spins forward here for Lee Dixon. And the first goal of the new season for Arsenal. It's come from John Hartson. Well, that's good pressure by Arsenal. Oh, Reaper put up a hand, penalty. Well, I don't know what Mark Reaper was thinking of here. He was obviously perturbed by the presence of Hartson. Handball. In the absence of Ian Wright, the penalty responsibilities with Dennis Bergkamp. 2-0. The enemy. Arsenal rather neglected him. Really is a match of very fine margins. McManaman, oh, and it's deflected off bold, and Liverpool get the break. McManaman. Oh, that's beautifully done for Barnes. Beaten out by Seaman, driven back by McManaman, he's got another one. Flick 
And uh, Walsh has uh, lost his balance and lost the ball to Bergkamp. Oh, did he pull him down? I think he did. Dennis Bergkamp just inside the penalty area. Tugged back by Steve Walsh, penalty. Bergkamp's second penalty of the season, his second goal of the season. On from Winterberg. Back from Grayson. Oh, and Casey Keller caught in possession, Ian Wright, open goal! The gift gratefully accepted. Not the sort of incident you'd expect at this level of the game. Three games in eight days resulted in Arsenal finishing the month in third place with six points. September was to prove just as busy. Hughes. Wise running free. Still Dennis Wise tripped by Steve Bold and Chelsea have the chance to draw first blood here with a penalty. Bold was late. So it's the Frenchman, Frank Leboeuf, to give Chelsea the lead. Parla gets it back from Viali. Viali gets it back from Parla, and then uh, here's Burley. Plenty of players forward for Chelsea here. Viali against Linigan. Viali shot. Oh, it's in! Well, only John Lukic knows how. It's a good header from Hartson. It's Merson. Great goal. Arsenal back in the game. Keon trying to uh, get free. Corner worked short in the end between Merson and Blatt and Martin Keon did get free. Great comeback by the Gunners. Well, it's over the top and Wright has beaten Kari into it. Ian Wright hurt in the scoring of the goal, but what a crucial goal for him and for Arsenal. Clark lost the flight of the ball, he lost the path of Wright as well. And Ian Wright puts Arsenal into the lead. Well, it's all gone wrong for Ruud Hullett and Chelsea. Arsenal wanting more. Crowd calling for the final whistle. Referee letting Chelsea go on with Andy Myers. Wise calling for it, but it goes infield to Spencer. And here is Wise. Well, Chelsea have got something from the game, it seems. 3-3. York, Townsend taking over, Southgate able to stride on, nice football from Aston Villa, Arsenal want an offside, they're not going to get it and Milosevic is going to get himself a goal. Milosevic, that's Churchich with the pass. And York, still York. Lukic couldn't hold it. Two for Villa, two for Savo Milosevic. In from Dixon. Well, there might be a chance here for Masson, there is. Arsenal haven't given this up. 
Aston Villa concede a corner. Merson, understandably urgent in his movements to take it. Oh, Linnigan! Off the post and in. And Andy Linnigan, that cup final hero back in 93, is an Arsenal hero again. Really is a tough draw for both sides to meet this early in the competition. Well, Juskowiak, he's in and the goal is given. Arsenal are behind at home. Nicely forward from Nielsen. And Effenberg, oh, Linnigan slipped. Seaman pushed it back to Effenberg and he took the second chance. Merson. The Russian Munch and Gladbach backing off him and they pay the price. Well, that's put a few smiles back on Arsenal faces. It was looking a black night against the team in the black kit. But Paul Merson puts Arsenal back in the game. Goal! Paslak. 3-1. Well, the German fans continue to sing. Merson. It's right. Good stop by the goalkeeper, but right puts it in and renews hope for Arsenal. Well, I wonder what impact this will have when the final analysis is drawn up in a couple of weeks' time, but Ian Wright on the spot, and it's two for Arsenal. The German city of Cologne was the setting for the second leg. The travelling fans were sure they could overturn the 3-2 deficit, and the players themselves looked well up for the game as they took the field. Merson. And now Mönchengladbach pushing one or two players forward. Effenberg's pass, inviting Juskowiak, who got the first goal in the first game, and he's done the same here. Well, Arsenal badly in need of some sort of fillet before half-time. And with Ian Wright around, there's always a chance that that might happen. 1-1 one, one here. Vieira. Arsenal have to chase the game. This is Merson. What a goal! Well, those who come here to Cologne supporting Arsenal must be absolutely thrilled by what they're witnessing. Arsenal draw level on aggregate. They've still got the away goals problem to overcome. Great goal from Merson. Lupescu, and again, headed on by Hochstatter, and here's Effenberg, well that might be the decisive moment, Arsenal have to keep on pressing, Effenberg, Well, there are problems here. And they've got another one. Juskowiak again. And now it's 3-2 to Mönchengladbach in both matches. It's a mood of disappointment, to be truthful, because um, the, boys, the boys fought very hard and um, they just got us on the break. Any game, you know, we don't like losing. And he's disappointed, you know, we, we definitely fancied our chances tonight, we were confident. 
back to the league and Pat Rice found himself in sole charge as Stuart Houston left to take over at QPR. Manager in waiting Arsene Wenger wished him well via the big screens before the game against Sheffield Wednesday. We've done such a magnificent job. Let's win tonight. Pembridge and Sheffield Wednesday knocking the ball around with the confidence you'd expect from a team that have started the season so well. And here's Andy Booth, and they're in front at Highbury. On comes Patrick Vieira for his Arsenal debut. Born in Africa, French under-21 international. Bags of promise, signed from the great AC Milan. Forward from Dixon, bit of hesitation there, and Hartson able to cut it back. Here comes David Platt. Well, that is Platt's trademark. Arriving at the right time. Hartson and Merson's away. Sheffield Wednesday have got some chasing to do here. Des Walker brings down Merson. Arsenal have a penalty and Walker is in trouble. Mike Reid to make the decision. And Walker is off. Well, he's quick, Des Walker, but he wasn't quick enough then. Ian Wright, this to give Arsenal the lead. And he's done it, even though Pressman went the right way. Well, it's all Arsenal now. Merson, Vieira, Platt, half thought perhaps about having a crack at goal himself. Uses Dixon, it'll drop for right. The poacher's goal. Winterburn winning it well forward. Merson taking over. Winterburn's available again. Wright's in the middle. Is this the moment? It is. The hat trick, his 100th league goal for the club. And what a change in the shape of the game from the first half. It's now Arsenal 4, Sheffield Wednesday 1. Great night for Ian Wright. 100 league goals for the club, 150 goals in all competitions. The second leading scorer in the club's history now. He's passed John Radford. Watch out, Cliff Bastard. Oh, and Emerson took his eye off the ball. And here's Wright. Emerson gets back at him. A rare old tussle there now. Fleming stepping in for Middlesbrough. Dixon has spotted John Hartson in the clear. It's a chance for Arsenal. And it's a beautifully taken goal from the Welshman. Cox. Emerson. Platt getting in quickly. Back with Cox again. Now, though, Hartson for Arsenal. Angling that pass well for Merson. Right through the centre. Cut out by Vickers, or not cut out by Vickers, Ian Wright! The day after that defeat of Middlesbrough, Arsene Wenger made a whistle-stop trip to Highbury. It was a chance to see at first hand his new working surroundings and to meet his new colleagues. He was introduced to the British press and posed for photographs on the pitch. Afterwards, he took time out in Arsenal's television studio to catch up on some recent games and pass over one or two ideas to Pat Rice for the game against Sunderland six days later. Merson's pass. Oh, and uh, Scott went in then and Paul Danson didn't like that. Where did Lee Dixon? Martin Scott with a dangerous challenge. And he's off. His second offence. Up goes Stewart. And uh, 
Steve Bold at his back. Did he push Stewart onto that? Stewart certainly uh, put arm to ball. Oh, my goodness. The referee is seeing that as a second bookable offence, the handball. And Paul Stewart goes and Sunderland are down to nine men. Peter Reid cannot believe what he's seeing. And, of course, he's been sent from the dugout as well. Still gallant defending from Sunderland. Shaw's cross. Hartson! Well, Arsenal at last have got the goal. Shaw. Now Parler. Tight angle, great shot! Well, Sunderland well and truly sucked now. A rare goal from Ray Parler. So, an unbeaten month for Arsenal. Pat Rice had left the Gunners in a good position when he finally handed over the reins to Arsene Wenger. Well, maybe a mixed blessing for Arsene Wenger. First game in charge, away to the bottom club. Vieira. Played on by Wright to Winterburn. That's rather speculative, but Hartson made it more than that. Oh, right turned inside marker. Well, he makes it look ridiculously easy, Ian Wright. He was helped, to be fair, by Nicky Marker not getting close enough to him, but the taking of the chance, brilliant. Wilcox. Vieira getting to it with that easy stride of his to score his second and maybe Barry Blackburn involved in the build-up providing the pass but look at Ian Wright's first touch to carry it on into his stride and then the acceleration and the rest inevitable Wright going on Winterburn quickly on the scene and Arsenal keep going well, the ball's still alive with Vieira, despite a bit of a groan of disapproval from the north stand. Well, everyone stopped as though there was going to be an offside then, but Steve Grizovic served Coventry nobly. Mercer's ball in. Hartson's header, maybe he feels he should have scored. Right was a certainty, but not. Merson. Arsenal still pen back. And a goal! Mike Sheeran, man in form, got there first. Keown. Merson. Ian Wright is he to the rescue here? He is. Much needed for Arsene Wenger and his players. Now bold. And maybe Stoke can break here. Certainly, you know, when you play a team managed by Lou Makari, there's going to be a contest. Oh, and it's Mike Sheeran who scored in the first game. He scored again here and Stoker in front. Vieira, Bergkamp, pulled back, it's a penalty. Short run up from right. Goalkeeper went the right way, but he rather dived underneath it. Right cross, and Platt put it in with his chest. So it's looking brighter for Arsenal now, perfect start to the second half for them.
And right showing that he can make goals as well as score them. Merson with the corner. And there's another one. And you can't let Wright have that sort of room. Totally unattended by the far post. Right. Bergkamp skimmed it in. And the Stoke resistance well and truly broken now. Right. Well, this is uh, Dixon. Merson is there. And there's number five. He got it across the line somehow. Lee Dixon very involved with that buccaneering run. And then Merson by the goalkeeper, maybe a defender as well. So, who'd have thought of this at half-time when it was 1-1? It is now Arsenal 5, Stoke City 1. But hang on, <laughs> more to come, and it's Sheeran again. 5-2 now. Oh, at Ruddock. Lost his concentration, lost the ball. And David James has brought down Hartson and an early penalty here at Anfield for Arsenal. So at the cop end, Ian Wright. And Arsenal are in front, and no sort of celebration here. Bjernaby's cross, McManaman's header. Out comes Lukic, and uh, Liverpool won a penalty for the contact with Fowler. It's not been given by Alan Wilkie. Corner taken quickly, now they've got a penalty. Well, that must have been seen as handball by Dixon. So Robbie Fowler, who's done so much damage to Arsenal in the past, puts them behind here. McAteer. Taken on by McManaman, McAteer held his position well, and Fowler, he's got another one. Mark Wright climbing on John Hartson, it's the third penalty of the game. And Arsenal with ten men. Now have the chance to get a foothold back in this cup tie, Ian Wright scores again. 3-2. Berger. Well, that may well end the Arsenal resistance. Radebe with the throw. You wonder what's going through George Graham's mind. Must be a very strange afternoon for him, but now at least he's got the match to concentrate on. And Vieira, stretching away here. And it's Lee Dixon, the goalkeeper's positioning was a little strange, and Dixon had plenty to aim at. And no sooner had George Graham sent Leeds United out to face Arsenal at Highbury, they're a goal down. And it's Lee Dixon. Bergkamp, here's another one. Well, Arsenal really pumped up for this particular challenge. Back to Merson, who'd stayed onside. Rush. But Arsenal have it again. And Leeds looking across to the far side. There's no flag. And it's a goal for Ian Wright. It's now been nine games since Arsenal were beaten in the league, so now they're top of the table for the first time since November 1992. Ekoku, hardly to the right. Ball didn't get there. Vieira. 
And that's a good run from him. And it's a useful pass too because it's put Ian right in for the opening goal. Celebrations at Selhurst Park again from a player who knows this ground so well. Oh, it's handball given against Merson. So the danger not over for Arsenal yet. Jones! Yes, it's in. And that was Perry uh, coming over the back of right. A foot up there, was it? Well, the game goes on, and Merson's got an angle here for a second goal for Arsenal. Plenty of length on the throw. Jones volleys it in again. This is Robbie Earl. And it's bundled in. Marcus Gale, I think. Giggs. Well, it's played back by David Platt. And Seaman trying to prevent the corner has just given the ball to Nicky Butt and Arsenal are in trouble here. And it's an own goal off Winterburn. Dixon's throw. Burkamp. Penalty. I think Clive Wilson got in the second time. There was a genuine uh, tangle challenging for the ball there. But watch as Burkamp tries to get up. Out goes Wilson's leg. Well, whether that was intentional or not, the referee's seen it that way. And David Ellery has given Arsenal a penalty. And here comes Ian Wright. More celebrations for Wright and for Arsenal. The name up in lights again. Well, in theory, uh, Tottenham should throw the ball back to Arsenal, but they've uh, gone for a goal and got a goal. Andy Sinton. 1-1. One, one. Keep it in the corner. No. Playing such adventurous football under Arsene Wenger. And reaping a rich reward here in stoppage time. Rubbing Tottenham noses in the dirt. 3-1. Ian Wright is springing away. Left of centre. It's held off Peacock. Oh, what a goal! from Lee Dixon. There's his answer to Ginola. Arsenal have scored. Beardsley to Ginola. Oh, Shearer's free. And he doesn't miss from there. Can't pay... Alan Shearer, enough tributes. He might be in again here. And Graham Barber has to decide what and where and why. Begs the question, what punishment for Adams? Oh, it is. It is punishment. Graham Barber's thought about it and Tony Adams is sent off. Ian Wright on the ball with... Uh, an awful lot to do, but help arriving in the shape of Merson. And suddenly he saw an avenue through the centre. It might run on for right here. Smash and grab it, maybe. Newcastle can't believe it. But it's Ian Wright to a tee. In the 15th minute of the second half, and Arsenal are back in front. They've done it with ten men this time. Oh, what a story this is. Merson was trying to shoot. Wright got lucky, but he made the most of it. November's fixtures don't come much harder than that. A difficult start was more than compensated for by that defeat of the old enemy Spurs and their first Premiership points at Newcastle. Now Wright, Vieira taking it uh, on the burst. And he's blocked off 
by Lundekwam. I'm not sure whether Patrick Vieira might well have knocked that ball too far, but Peter Jones, the referee, has given the free kick Arsenal's way. Besson setting a wall. Merson is there. And it is Merson. And it's a goal! The free kick paying off for Paul Merson. And it ran beyond. Merson Hartson's pass collected by Wright. Merson. Penalty! Lundekram who was penalised in the incident in the first half that led to the opening goal. He's punished again here. So the guessing game between Besant and Wright. Two old campaigners who know a thing or two about these situations. And Ian Wright knows too much for the Southampton goalkeeper. And Ostenstadt just sneaking in behind Adams. Other Southampton players are arriving. Ostenstadt doing very well indeed. Lukic committed. And it's Berkovic who's put it in. Some hope for Southampton. Vieira punching it forward to Merson. Onto the run of Parler. He's got forward well here, Ray Parler. Right's in the centre. And Shaw teed up. That should mean the three points for Arsenal. The third goal from Paul Shaw. Well, Ball couldn't flick that one on. But it's back with Merce. Track of it. And uh, I'll be taking the free kick quickly. And Dean Sturridge. He's quick. Oh, and so too was the shot. That is a terrific goal. Derby certainly much more enterprising in the second half. They've got it back to 1 1, and here's Ashley Ward throwing Linnigan out of the centre. Chris Powell with the cross, Sturridge with the header, and Derby are in front, and it was Daryl Powell who put it in. Time ticking away from Arsenal. The unbeaten home record is under serious, serious threat here. Merson. And this is Adams. He's kept it in. Vieira! In the nick of time. Great piece of retrieving by Tony Adams. And Patrick Vieira with his first goal for Arsenal. Merson. Crossley's come for it and lost it. And Ian Wright says thank you very much indeed. Still without a win since the opening day of the season. And now hoping that Stuart Pearce can be the catalyst for some change. And Holland has changed the picture here from Saunders Cross 1 1. Pearce. Trying to find a 
final fairy tale here for his first game as caretaker manager and Holland has supplied it right at the last God. right leaving it for Mercer Shaw's on the left Paul Shaw for Arsenal Bergkamp's header well that is as close as we've come to a goal at Hillsborough one of the better attacks of the night Shaw's cross and Bergkamp very close indeed by Vieira on Milosevic and Arsenal can spring forward and Ian Wright is onside and Arsenal have the lead well it looks as though he wants to send out more messages with the t-shirt Ryan Little's expression saying much about Aston Villa they're a goal down but Milosevic 1-1. One, one. Winterberg. Arsenal is strangely uncertain in the air at the back. But here's Morrow. Looking around for support. He's got it from Merson. Paul Merson with an absolute beauty for Arsenal. York and it's got into the back of the Arsenal net it's 2-2 two, two. too many draws in December saw Arsenal replaced by Liverpool at the top of the table Patrick Vieira has been one of the finds of the season he's done his talking on the pitch but he spoke to us about his move to Arsenal from AC Milan last summer. Je savais, je savais qu'Arsenal faisait partie des, des grands clubs euh, européens parce qu'ils avaient disputé une demi-finale notamment au Parc des Princes. Ils ont déjà gagné, gagné la Coupe d'Europe. Ils ont, ils ont été euh, dans les premiers euh, clubs anglais. Et pour, pour moi, c'était une bonne, une bonne opportunité de, de pouvoir rejouer dans un grand club. Bah, quand je suis venu, je veux dire, il y, y a tout ce que tout ce qu'il faut pour, pour, pour pour être un grand club, je veux dire, ils ont, ils ont un public qui est, qui est fabuleux. Je veux dire, il y a, il y a, des, il y a des terrains où, où on peut s'entraîner. Il, il y a un entourage qui est, qui est très, très bien. Je veux dire, ils ont des, des très bonnes structures. Et puis bon, à partir de là, il y a, sur, le, sur le terrain, on a, on a vu une temps qu'il y avait de, de très bons joueurs avec des, 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 des leaders dans cette équipe. Et puis bon, à partir de là, il y a, il y a vraiment tout pour, pour être une grande équipe. Quoi. Dans chaque ligne, il y a... Il y, a, il, y a des, il y a des il y a des des leaders si on peut dire je veux dire bon derrière il y a quand même Tony Abraham au milieu il y a, a Denis Bergkamp devant il y a Yann White Patrick was bought for three and a half million pounds on the recommendation of Arsène Wenger we asked him why he left AC Milan pour moi c'était une très bonne expérience quand j'étais quand je suis arrivé à Milan il y avait il y avait pas encore la loi Bosman il y avait il y avait trois étrangers les trois étrangers bon c'était Savicevic De Sailly et, et Georges Béard Et puis moi, pour moi, c'était très difficile de jouer parce que quand il y en avait un deux qui était suspendu ou qui était blessé, il y avait Boban. Et s'il avait fallu qu'il y ait au moins deux étrangers de blessés pour que je puisse jouer. Et puis bon, c'est vrai que c'était assez difficile pour un jeune de ne pas, de ne pas jouer. Mais bon, c'est une expérience que, que je ne regrette pas. C'est une expérience qui m'a beaucoup appris parce que bon, j'ai vraiment appris beaucoup de choses. Et pour moi, c'est quelque chose de positif. Quoi. What did Patrick know of his fellow countryman Arsène Wenger? Ben, je savais, je savais pas grand chose parce que bon, je veux dire, c'est, je jouais à Cannes et puis bon, il était entraîneur de, de l'équipe de Monaco et bon, je veux dire, avec Monaco, il a toujours joué les premiers rôles du championnat. Ils ont été en demi-finale et en finale de la Coupe d'Europe. De, et puis bon, je veux dire, c'est un entraîneur qui est, qui est beaucoup, qui est, qui, est, qui est connu, qui fait parmi les grands entraîneurs français, quoi. It was Pat Rice who first named Patrick on the team sheet to play Sheffield Wednesday. What does he remember about that game? C'est mes débuts contre Sheffield Wednesday, je veux dire, c'est un début où j'étais en train de m'échauffer et j'entends le public scander mon nom. Je veux dire, c'est fabuleux pour un joueur qui, qui commence dans un club, quoi. On ne peut pas mieux demander. Le premier match que j'ai fait, euh, fait à Highbury, c'était... On ne peut pas mieux commencer, si on peut dire, quoi. Parce que bon, 
Parce qu'on perdait à zéro, j'ai la chance de rentrer. Et puis à la fin du match, on gagne 4-1. J'avais, j'avais fait des, des bons débuts. Puis bon, le plus dur pour moi, c'est de, c'est de, de, de confirmer. Même si bon, je sais que, que le plus dur pour moi reste à faire. Parce que bon, je veux dire, c'est une première saison, mais l'année prochaine, il faut, faut confirmer. Mais, euh, mais bon, je veux dire, ici, le public, c'est, c'est quelque chose de, de fabuleux. Quoi. Parce que bon, quand on rentre sur le terrain, ils sont toujours là à nous encourager et tout. Et puis bon, je veux dire, bon, moi, je regarde les autres joueurs et je vois que les joueurs se donnent, se donnent à fond parce que bon, c'est, c'est le public qui, leur, qui le pousse. His style of playing the game is suited to English football. So after only a few months, what are his thoughts about playing in the Premiership? J'aime bien, j'aime bien le jeu anglais parce que c'est un jeu où il y a beaucoup d'engagement, où les joueurs ne calculent pas, se donnent à fond pendant 90 minutes. Et puis bon, qui gagne ou qui perd, pour eux le plus important, c'est, c'est de se donner à fond dans un match. Puis bon, j'aime bien cette, cette façon de voir les choses. Et puis bon, à partir de là, je, je me sens bien ici, tout, tout va bien pour moi. En Angleterre, on trouve, on trouve quelque chose qu'on trouve nulle part ailleurs, c'est-à-dire un public. Parce que bon, je veux dire, comparé à l'Italie ou comparé à la France, c'est, c'est un peu différent. Je veux dire, ici, il y, a, il y a un public qui vient pour voir un match de foot et pour se divertir, pour, pour s'amuser. C'est complètement différent par rapport, par rapport à la France ou par rapport à l'Italie. Et puis à partir de là, les joueurs se donnent à fond et pour essayer justement de leur rendre ce que, ce que leur public le, le donne. Quoi. Cette année, je veux dire, on a, fait une, on a quand même fait une très belle saison. Où on a encore la chance de finir deuxième ou plus important, je pense que c'est de finir européen. Et puis bon, l'année prochaine, où, où il y aura toutes les choses en place, où, où tout le monde se, se, aura bien son, son, son rôle, je veux dire, on, a, on aura une très bonne carte à jouer dans, dans le championnat. Quoi. Winterberg. Now Adams. Sent long by Keown. Pierre is there. Burkamp is there! Well, he's a wonderful combination of power and elegance. And even Brian Robson who must have had a very good view of this, the number 16 there, must have had grudging admiration. Oh, it's a misheader by Mikel Beck, and Ian Wright nips in for Arsenal second. Winterburn again, hoisted in by Mercer, the climb from John Hartson, doing what he does best. Bridges, right, got between Keown and Bold and got the ball, and Gray is there and he steered Sunderland level. Signs of Arsenal looking more positive in these early minutes of the second half. Bergkamp dragging the ball back. Still Bergkamp. Well, it's an exquisite goal from a player who is really in peak form at the moment. The final season at Roker Park, but there won't have been many better goals scored down the years on this ground. And the one from Dennis Bergkamp here for Arsenal. Appreciated everywhere. Bergkamp to Mercer. And it goes Hughes! Centre from Nigel Martin, but Adams wins it well. Bold. Oh, Rob Wallace, can he reach it? It's hit the post, and Wallace follows in, and Leeds United are in front.
Right. Making some good ground. Headed out by Parlock, powerfully. Gareth Hall for Sunderland. Now Bracewell. Chased aggressively by Hartson. Bracewell gets the better of the Welshman, though. Williams. Well, it's a goal, and it may well have been an own goal by Tony Adams. I personally feel that all footballers uh, should read it. It gives you a real good insight to what fans, fans like Nick Hornby are like, not the idiots, not the eggs. You know, but real genuine fans who it, it completely, um, the, the football club uh, is something to do with their whole life. It's their life. They can relate back to things because of the football club. And it's just, when I read it, I just couldn't put it down. It was, you know, everybody should see it or read it or listen to it. Ian Wright speaks for every football fan when he talks about the best-selling book, Fever Pitch. Lifelong fan Nick Hornby touched a nerve with all fans when he wrote about growing up supporting his favourite team, Arsenal. When plans were made to transform the book into a film, he was the obvious person to write the screenplay. But what does Nick feel are the main differences between the book and the film? Well, the book, Fever Pitch, co covered a very long period of time, um, from um, the late 60s to the early 90s. and. Um, it just sort of went through each season more or less in turn. Um, the film is very much set in the one season, um, and w w with the flashbacks sort of thrown in as well. So the idea was really to try and get some of the spirit of the book and and some of the um, the ideas and observations into the one season and into that central relationship, the, the male-female relationship. Where are you up to? I'm starving. I was thinking of ringing for a pizza. Have you read Byron? What? Have you read any of Byron's poems? Yeah. The Assyrian came down like a wolf on the fold and his sunnings were gleaming in black and old gold crap. What are those? My Arsenal boxer shorts. The film centres around Arsenal's famous victory at Liverpool. Looking back, what does Nick feel about that great day in May 89? I don't see how it could possibly be bettered as a football moment, um, sort of in the history of football, really. You, uh, it's very hard to imagine a situation where um, the two teams playing for the league meet each other in the last game of the season and it's settled with a goal in the last minute. I mean, if you scripted it, you could only script it as good as that. You couldn't get it any better. So um, it's, it's something I still can't believe when I watch, you know, I've seen the film a few times now and I've always watched the video a lot and it, uh, you can never quite believe that Mickey Thomas is going to get that bounce again, but he does. Thomas charging through the midfield! Thomas, it's up for grabs now! Thomas! Right at the end! A great moment and there were more great moments in the years that followed. What are Nick's impressions about the current Arsenal team? The week before the season started, and even, I think, after the first home game, um, the West Ham game, even though we won it, I didn't think you know, the game was much good and we didn't play very well. I was quite sort of despondent, and um, it, it's amazing, really, how the, the season went on. Um, the appointment of Arsene Wenger was just, um, quite inspired, I think. And, I think the signing of Vieira also, you know, that, that's the first thing he did. That, he, that put him on side with more or less everybody because Vieira was fantastic from the Sheffield Wednesday game when he made his debut. Um, and I've just enjoyed it more than I've enjoyed a season for years, I think, probably since the last championship year, 91. The end of the 91-92 season was pretty good when we scored all those goals at the end of the year. but. Um, most games at Highbury that I've been to this season I've really enjoyed um, and it, it has been a while since an Arsenal fan could say that, I think. Yes! 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 <laughs> yes! 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 We asked Nick what it is that's restored his faith in the team this season. I think that the, the main thing that you, you get a sense of is, is um, that they're all very happy, um, that, that they really enjoy playing for the club. Most of them are playing 
the best football that they've played for years. Um, you know, I think probably a lot of people thought Ian Wright was just starting his decline last year, and you know, he's, he's had a fantastic season. Um, Paul Merson is, is, is playing better than he's ever played before. Some of these things are to do with what's been happening in their lives, but um, obviously a lot of it is to do with, with Wenger. Um, and having somebody in midfield who um, drives forward, can score goals, and pass, and tackle. I mean, it's a long time since we've had somebody in our team who could do that. If they finished third and got a place in Europe, I'd, I'd be happy with that, I think. And um, there'd be a lot to look forward to next season. I'm sure there'll be some new faces here and back in the European competition. Um, that, that I'd set, settle for that. Because the future does look pretty good, I think. Bolt. Platt could get the uh, return pass back to Steve Bold. But here's Bergkamp! And he's stroked it past Southall. 1 0 to Arsenal. Pace, but Merson gets a corner. Arsenal very mindful of the fact that Everton, the last side to win at Highbury in the league. Adams full of bounce right in front of the goalkeeper. Winterburn with the corner. Goes Martin Keogh. It drops for Vieira. Well, it's taken a while to get going this game. But Arsenal have now struck twice in quick succession. Watson. Oh, and that's a misplay by Unsworth. Gave Watson no chance because Bergkamp was alive. Dennis Bergkamp for Arsenal, beaten out by Southall. But Merson is there. was a defensive error to start with. Southall tried to plug the gap, but he couldn't. Merson scores. Barnby with the corner. And Ferguson with a fabulous header in a losing cause. by Winterburn. Williamson pressed by Vieira who gets away with the ball. Merson and Ray Parler. Well the boyhood West Ham fan scores against West Ham United at Upton Park for Arsenal. Julian Dix always a danger. Roland with the corner, Bilic, there was another touch in there and I think it belonged to Matthew Rose. Mercy, lucky deflection off for Porfirio, moment for Lee Dixon to see what's on, and Merson was on. And Ian Wright is on through the centre. Arsenal are back in front. January was a much better month than December for Arsenal. A return to form saw them rise to second, hot on the heels of Manchester United. Well, it has been a game of very few opportunities. Molina, bold. Leeds pitch not helping the flow to the play, but Arsenal trying to be more fluid in their movement here. And Wright's ball to Parler is a very good one. It was a chance. Some credit to Nigel Martin 
for coming out and maybe distracting Fowler, but Ian Wright marking his arrival in the game with a fine ball. Walker with the fist. Fowler's shot! Oh, and it went through the crowd and just went wide of the post. Out. This is Anderton, knocked away from him by Bowles. Stephen Carr's effort, carried away by Lukic. He stretches again. Is it over the line? Lukic has gone back to claim it. No goal. Great credit to the ground staff here, the way this pitch has absorbed the torrential rain we've had. Gary Neville. Oh, it's misjudged by Tony Adams. Cole is in the scorer against his first club. So Arsenal have a corner. A goal down. Burkamp taking it. Vieira. Cut out by Giggs at pace. On from Paborski. Cole. Quick movement from Manchester United. Typical of them. Solskjaer! Well, they've swept the length of the pitch to score. Cole, who was looking questioningly at referee Bodnum for a free kick. Winterburn. Now Giggs. Bounces back Arsenal's way. Merson. Bergkamp! Sweetly swept in from Ray Parler's cross. And Arsenal will feel they're back in it here. At 2-1 now. Vieira, Hughes, still a chance for Arsenal to get something from the game, Bergkamp's cross, and Ian Wright! Well, Schmeichel still comes out on top. Well, they say head the ball down, but this went down too much, and bounced up where the goalkeeper could tip it over. by Peter Fear, but not by Ardley. February couldn't have gone much worse for the Gunners. They're beginning to fall further away from the top two, and if they don't improve soon, a European place could be in jeopardy. The reserves have had a good season under the guidance of manager George Armstrong. The combination has proved very strong this season, but his team have acquitted themselves very well by finishing in sixth place. Tom Wally's youth team reached the final of the Southern Junior Floodlit Cup. Unfortunately, Crystal Palace proved to be too strong and ran out comfortable 3-1 winners on aggregate. For Vic Akers and his Arsenal ladies, there's everything to play for. They only need a point from three games to secure their third title in five years. We caught up with the side as they prepared for their game against Liverpool at Highbury. I wonder what would be going through Herbert Chapman's mind if he was still alive today. Joanne Broadhurst is Arsenal's top striker this season and was in confident mood when we spoke to her before kick-off. I think um, we need a point mathematically, but we want to win, obviously, because we're at Highbury and it's um, be a big achievement because the league's really strong this year. So. We want to get a win and go out in style, really, so that we've got no pressure on us for the last games. So as the ladies take the Highbury turf, there's everything to play for. Yeah. Well, Rachel Yankees played Kirsty peeling through here. It needs some composure at the end, and she couldn't quite supply it. Oh, a 
always easy to say. But she missed the target. She looked at the throw. Pass it back from Williams. It's Kelly Smith chasing and wasting no time with the shot. And that's a goal worthy of the Highbury itself. It's a terrific effort. Well, many players would have taken an extra touch or two, but that was Wallop, back of the net. <laughs> Kelly Smith doing well again to get it back to Weekly. And, oh, it looked to tap in for Broadhurst, who would normally have taken this chance well. 99 times out of 100. OK, we get a smashing start. Smashing start. We a great goal. You know, a super goal. One, you know, really, really pleasing on the eye. And now, all of a sudden, we stop doing the things that we, 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 we're exposing them with. OK? Look for them to make errors. Look for them to make errors and, and force errors on them. That's good pressing by Daly. And here's Smith. Score of the game's only goal so far and off in search of another one in fantastic fashion. That's absolutely magnificent to show the range in her play, the two goals, a first time shot from distance and here a solo run showing speed and strength and splendid control at the end of it all, tremendous. reflect the game I don't think but you know no we were just happy we knew we could win if we play well so we've had a few good years but this is probably the best group I've ever had in terms of you know characters as well I mean we've got some tremendous players ability wise and probably my youngest group as well Six days later and the ladies were back at Highbury to be presented with the Women's FA Premier Trophy before an appreciative Arsenal crowd. The ladies won their two remaining fixtures and in the end won the league by a comfortable eight points. Congratulations to Vic Akers and his team. Judged by Unsworth, and that could be very costly indeed. Bergkamp in behind him, difficult angle, but he's got it beyond Southall. <laughs> Waiting for guard, and in right took that wonderfully well. That's a super goal. to get away from the bottom of the table where they've been enmeshed for so much of the season but they're a goal down now and Bergkamp sliced them apart well how strange that Arsenal have uh, slipped up at home recently against Manchester United and Wimbledon Holland has heard the whistle, but it's handball against him. Certainly worth another look. Down he went, and there he pulled the ball back. It's a penalty. Mike Reed saw it, gave it, and Bergkamp will take it for his second of the game. There it is.
short. Carla digging out the cross very well indeed, but Taylor didn't do so well. And it's led to the first goal in the Premiership for Stephen Hughes. Well read by Winterburn. Brought out Robbie Slater, who was given not much chance by the pass in truth. Short. Southampton still finding it hard to get out of the defensive third of the pitch from their point of view. Parler. And Shaw gets to it. And the player who scored against Southampton at Highbury does it again at the Dell. Harkness. Manaman. Oh, Siemens lost it from Bjernaby's shot. And Stan Collymore has tapped it in. Right, there's no flag, it's Robbie Fowler, goalkeeper committed. Well, a penalty's been given, and Fowler seems to be saying no. Whether he's trying to make sure Seaman doesn't get sent off. No one's quite sure, except of one fact, that it is a penalty for Liverpool. Seaman seemed to pull away at the last moment. Fowler seemed to plead Arsenal's cause rather than Liverpool's. But Fowler has now got to get his mind right because he's going to take the penalty himself. Well, if he didn't think it was a penalty, has he got it in him to score the penalty? Seaman saves it, but it's a goal nonetheless from Jason McAteer following up. What a sequence of events. It is 2-0 to Liverpool. Vieira, now Platt. Flip forward by Gar. In right is there from the, the header by Bergkamp. The ball's looped into the net. And it's Arsenal 1, Liverpool 2. David Seaman will remember this game for as long as he lives, but for the wrong reasons. As you can see, he takes his hands away at the last moment, and no contact is made with Robbie Fowler. So, looking back, what did England's number one think about the incident? You know, I never touched him, um, and the referee gave it, you know, and hopefully from that, you know, we can get something good out of football, like, you know, third eye or something like that, you know, something that'll help the game. You know, there's been so many incidents where the ball's gone over the line, and the referee's not been able to give it because he hasn't seen it. And, uh, you know, and I think something like that could help. I knew, and, and Robbie knew, you know, I, I met him on the England trip, uh, you know, uh, the other night, and, um, you know, he says, I know you never touched me, he says, and that's why, you know, I was saying sorry, you know, he never touched me, because I knew you'd throw me in the lake afterwards, he says. <laughs> so March saw a quick return to form for Arsenal, but worryingly, that defeat by Liverpool meant that both Manchester United and Liverpool have taken maximum points from their games with Arsenal. The appointment of Arsene Wenger at Arsenal is proving to be a masterstroke. His style of playing the game is proving to be a winner with fans and players alike. Added to that, he's thoroughly enjoying his time at Arsenal. Over what uh, I've experienced here, uh, I'm conscious that I enjoyed a lot because I couldn't imagine how big the passion uh, for football was here in England. And uh, because I'm a passionate man and because I love so much this game, I think I'm in the right country. I came here and it was new to have a foreign manager, so I could understand the scepticism of the people. And uh, funny wise, my, my, the fear how long I would last was one of the biggest bets in the country. So it was a good challenge for me to show that I can uh, do well. And uh, I just thought, let's try to do well, work very hard, try to convince uh, people by the quality of your work and uh, don't speak too much but uh, I think when you go somewhere it's normal that uh, people expect 
a lot of you and uh, I had a big disadvantage uh, here the football lives really inside the country and there's not much interest for the outside managers so maybe f apart from one or two I was uh, really unknown he's extremely happy with the attitude the players have adopted to his way of thinking and the challenge of managing in the Premiership we had a very good atmosphere in the team and in the inside the club and uh, I have the feeling that at least everybody during the whole season tried his best. Uh, in fact, I, I could take all the 11 players uh, and you just could say uh, I was really delighted. And uh, when I say 11, of course, I don't count all the younger players who came on, who did so well. And uh, it just was, uh, I think when you're a manager, you're happy just when a team lives together, is happy to play together and wants to achieve something together. Of course, I have some regrets because I think we, we, we did nearly could win the title because we didn't, was not a big difference, at least win one of the big games and we could be there today to fight still for the title. But we, they gave all everything for the whole season and that's always enjoyable when you're a manager. My ambition is always to do better, so uh, to improve the team, to uh, bring the quality, improve the quality of our game and of, of, of our teamwork and of course to, to finish in a higher position uh, when we finish this year, to do well in the European Cup because it's for sure now we'll be in the European Cup, to do well in the Cups if we play the Coca-Cola Cup because I don't know now if it will still give a place in Europe or if you have to play it, if you're in the Premier League or if they make an arrangement for the team who play in European Cups, all these kind of things, I don't know now. He's been careful in his signings this season. Who's he looking to bring to the club next year? Coming in, I see three or four players. We need to have uh, the structure of, uh, of our squad right. We have, uh, we have experienced players who still want to win and I don't want uh, to let them go and to, I want to keep them because they have the right spirit, they have the right ambition but we, have a, we are short between 20 and 30 and I brought some players in between of 18, 19, 20 but I think also we need some experienced players now between 24, 28 who can uh, uh, structure well the squad for the next season because we need more players. We, we were lucky to only to play really in one competition this year. I wouldn't imagine what happened if we had to play in Europe, in the FA Cup, in the League Cup and in the Championship. I think we had another squad to do it. The signing that made the most immediate impact was Patrick Vieira. How did he persuade AC Milan to sell him? I went back in October, and uh, end of October, for Juventus Milan and told them uh, and thanked them very much to release him. And they said, we know we made a big mistake, but we might buy him back. I said, that's could be a little bit late now, but he's a winner type. He likes to win and he's ready to ready to, to fight to win. And that's why maybe he has been so well accepted by the fans also, because he has shown from the first game on that uh, he wants to win the games and that it just doesn't come to show that he has some skill. He's never managed a player like Ian Wright before, but how does he channel Ian's aggression in the right direction? That's, uh, a very difficult question because you can make you can have a quiet Ian Wright outside the field but maybe also inside the field so it is a part of his ambition and uh, when you put everything in some in, in, in the game like he does and uh, when he he knows it's very hard with himself after the game you don't need to tell him you were bad or good or really bad he knows and he has expects so much of himself that sometimes he doesn't know where to stop because he's a passionate man and an extroverted man and uh, he says sometimes more than he thinks and uh, that's Ian Wright but uh, I think you, you can, he can of course master himself a little bit more but don't dream, you never, if you have a quiet Ian Wright you have a bad player Morris from the great man
Winterberg. Bergkamp. Chelsea won offside against Ian Wright, but it's not been given. And David Platt is in the centre for a tap it. Nichols chasing. Well, misjudged by Myers and Burley, but not by Bergkamp, who read that situation splendidly. 3-0 to Arsenal, very comfortable now. Lawrence, right against the touchline, but uh, moving forward at pace. Actually ran into Nigel Winterberg. Adams. Bergkamp giving chase. out Winterberg, Vieira, Vieira again, put in mind. he's threaded it through for David Platt who scored at Chelsea and scores here against Leicester City. Bergkamp's corner, a bit on the short side this time. against the post and David Platt in the right place again well, Blackburn supposed to throw the ball back to Arsenal under no pressure that's the etiquette of the game but Chris Sutton not obeying it well you can talk about teams in their time of need but you can hear the reaction from the crowd who feel there's a lack of sportsmanship and the Vieira taking it out on Sutton in particular he's got to be careful here and the referee Mike Riley has got to just calm things down in the closing moments and he's going to do that by producing the yellow card to Vieira and to Sutton for Sutton's lack of sportsmanship but for the push and shove with Vieira that came after it anyway Blackburn do have a corner oh and they've equalised from it Gary Flickcroft Grizovic and the throw produced the contest really of equal size between Strachan and Vieira but Arsenal still struggling to get uh, control of the ball Platt was flying in McAllister tries the shot and the ball's broken for Dublin well it's Coventry's lead inside the first minute Arsene Wenger furious Looking for right, but that's beyond him. But oh, Grizovic has fumbled and brought down right. And Coventry have gifted Arsenal a penalty. Well, if Grizovic, having conceded it, will now have to try and save it to spare his own blushes. Right takes 1 1. No reprieve for the goalkeeper. An unbeaten April has seen the Gunners climb to second spot in the league and as the end of the season approaches, they're well positioned for a place in the Champions League. Time now to catch up with Arsenal superstar Ian Wright. How has the season been for the man who's the club's record scorer for the sixth season running? Speaking to the boss the other day, he said this is my best uh, strike rate since I've been at the club. So it was quite surprising, so I was quite pleased with that. He just wants me to play and play well and play to the standard that I've set and be efficient. 
And I think this season it has gone pretty well like that for me. And, um, you know, when, when he feels that, you know, I haven't done as well as I should do, he, comes, he tells me straight out. And that's, how I, that's, that's OK with me. I've, I've never, ever... Uh, people, I think people think I've got a problem with criticism. I haven't got a problem with criticism, constructive criticism. But if people are having personal criticism and saying things to criticise you, what is nothing to do with the game, that's destructive. And I'll rebel against that. But the boss doesn't do that. And that's why we get on very well, because he's very constructive. And a lot of top people in the game have got a lot of respect for him. And, um, you know, coming off of that, I, I just think he's fantastic. He's done fantastic things for the players in this squad. Ian has received his usual quota of suspensions this season, but how does he feel when he's sitting in the stands when he knows he should be on the pitch? The only time it gets to me is if we lose, and we haven't done a lot of that when I've been out. We've, in fact, we've, we've done better <laughs> um, in some of the games. You know, but when you're suspended and uh, you, as a forward, your goals could be there to help the team, and you're out and they're not scoring, and the team lose, then you say that you, you've cost the team. But I think they've done all right when I haven't been there. Some of the things that you do, you know, it's, it, it's, of course you regret it, but I don't, you know, if I say the refs are useless, <clears throat> whatever, whatever, I mean that, you know, that's what I mean. And, you know, if people want to report me for that, then I'm not, I'm not going to say, well, I didn't mean it in this way. I meant it like that. I'll just say that and I'm, I'll get in trouble for it, but I'm not going to change where I am. I'm not going to sit back in leisure and regret things like that because it all goes towards how the season is and how you, how you react to different emotions, how the season's gone. One of the big talking points regarding the dark side of Ian Wright's nature this season was this clash with Peter Schmeichel. Looking back, does he have any regrets? I regret the rumpus, but the fact that I didn't, do, I didn't hurt him, I, I tackled the ball hard, and you know, his leg was there. If I wanted to tackle it, it would have been there for me to stamp on, but I didn't. I know that the tackle was bad, but I never done anything wrong to his person. But I think he insulted me and a lot of people, and he never, ever apologised for that. Ian's partnership with Dennis Bergkamp is becoming better as each game passes. Getting to know each other a lot more. Um, hopefully I don't run out of years before me and Dennis can really do something on the real massive stage, like hopefully the Champions League kind of thing. But um, I think that when you're playing with somebody of the quality of Dennis uh, and even with Patrick backing you up and things like that, uh, and Merce and that, you know, I think you can only get better as a partnership. One of the main games this is I, and this is perfect for me. Every goal is bringing him closer to the all-time record held by Cliff Baston. He is now only five short of the target of 179. Um, well, I can't think about it now because it's not going to happen this season. I'm going to do it next season, that's for sure. And uh, it's going to be a great time. It's going to be great. You know, um, I think this season, with all uh, all the things that's gone on, I've just, I just ran out of time. But, you know, it would have been nice because all the fans are saying, Ian, I hope you do it this season. It would have been great could have done it this season and we could have won something or preferably the league or something and you know the goals would have helped do that but um, you know next season I'll have to do it and, and I think once this season's finished and the next season starts then I think I'll be thinking about it. Now it's competition time and in the last video we gave you the chance to win a personally autographed copy of Ian Wright's new book. All you had to do was identify which Arsenal player is dressed as Santa Claus. The answer, of course, was John Hartson, now at West Ham. And the lucky winner was seven-year-old Matthew Fletcher from Barnet in North London. He had a great time meeting his hero before the Leicester City game. On offer this time is a new Arsenal away kit, modelled here by Captain Tony Adams. For details on how to win, it's over to Ian Wright again. The question for the competition is, for which team did I score my 100th league goal for Arsenal against? And if you think you know the answer, please write in to Arsenal Competition, Chrysalis Sport, 6 Church Studios, Camden Park Road, London, NW19AY. OK? As is traditional, we paid a visit to the Arsenal team training at London Coney. Arsene Wenger's continental style of preparing for games is reaping its rewards for a lot of the players, but the long-established youth system is still giving great chances for youngsters to reach the first team. It all started just after Christmas, really, for me, and uh, it's gone very well from there. I've had a few games and been enjoying every minute of it. You just have to look at Arsenal's history, really. You can go back to Tony Adams, David Rowe, Carson, Mickey Thomas. 
and uh, now myself obviously coming through. But there's obviously lots of other, other young good players out there. He's just brought uh, Manelka from France, who's, uh, who's a great prospect. Paul Shaw's played games this year. Scott Marshall's done very well. Ian Selly, there's, there's quite a number. Paul Merson is one player who's benefited from the arrival of the new manager. He's playing some of the best football of his career. It's been by far my best season. I've enjoyed it more than any other season as well. I've made my mind up, you know, to play with a smile, and when I don't, you know, it's time to call it a day, really, because you're not enjoying your football. But since the boss has come, football's been so enjoyable, and, you know, I think that's the same with all the lads, not just me. Amazingly, Paul Merson's last goal for the club was back in January in a 3-1 victory over Everton. It was his 99th for the club and he's been looking for number 100 ever since. Yeah, a long, long time. Uh, I'll be here next year as well, but hopefully I could do it with the last two games, but I'll be here next year. Hopefully I'll be here the year after that, so, you know, there's no rush. It's been a frustrating time for injuries for David Seaman, but the highlight of the season so far was being honoured with an MBE in the New Year's Honours list. I found out, I think it was the 12th of November, you get a letter saying you've been nominated for a, you know, an MBE. Um, and it just says nominated, it doesn't say you're getting one. And it says, you know, in the strictest confidence. So you don't tell anybody um, in case you don't get it, you know, and that's the hardest part. There's only me and my girlfriend, Debbie, knew. And I found out, you know, on the 31st, and, and from there it, it was great. You know, it's such a great feeling knowing that you've got it. Oh, it's brilliant, you know, top hat and tails and everything. Um, and then to meet the Queen, you know, which was a great thrill. She said, oh, you're the goalkeeper, aren't you? I said, yeah. And she, <laughs> She says, oh, you're back playing now because you've been injured. And I said, yeah, obviously. She says, uh, I said, I played last night, but don't ask about the result. She just started laughing and wish your hands and off I went. <laughs> Martin Keown has had a great season in the centre of defence. The player of the year has been one of the most consistent players this season. The manager, um, he, he creates a very relaxed atmosphere uh, to train and work in. And we just take that into our games. And uh, the emphasis is, you know, we've got the extra player at the back but we need to make it count when we're in possession. So we're all encouraged to go forward and join in and people fill in for you. Um, so you know, it's not so bad getting back. He's now back in the England squad. Had he ever given up hope of playing for his country again? You never give up, you always re remain hopeful, but uh, you do begin to wonder whether it's passed you by. Um, I think I'd, I you know, begin to think, yeah, you know, you know, I've had my chance, you know, I've had 11 games and um, some people didn't even get those. But, so it was nice when I got the, uh, the opportunity to play again and I thoroughly enjoyed it. With Alan Shearer to get past, it's been hard for Ian Wright to show his true form for England. He missed Euro 96, but he's consistently featured in the England setup this season and he wants to stay there if they qualify for the World Cup in France next year. Paul Merson is another who made it back into the squad, proof that his problems are behind him. Over Shearer, popped back in by Peacock, oh and popped into the net by Robbie Elliott who's becoming a real secret weapon for Newcastle. So a defeat for Arsenal by Newcastle but at the end of the game the players stayed on the pitch to show their appreciation to the Highbury faithful with whom they've shared a fantastic season. Asanovic, given plenty of time to play in the cross, Ward against the post and then in, Ashley Ward for Derby County. Oh and Adams already booked, must be in serious trouble here. Tony Adams sent off earlier this season at Newcastle. Elka. It's a good try, and the goalkeeper spilt it. And Ian Wright is on hand. Well, with ten men, Arsenal still playing with a real affection itself. If that sums up his season, you couldn't have a better example of the terrific talent of the Dutchman. Burkamp's pass, and Wright takes his tally to 30, and it's 3-1. 
So a great effort by Arsenal against Derby County, but unfortunately other results went against them in their hopes of qualifying for the Champions League. Third place means that they qualify for the UEFA Cup for the second season running, and with Arsene Wenger at the helm, it must only be a matter of time before the silverware returns to the Highbury Trophy Room.